organizers that essentially met at Tom's Dagger here in Dormont to put everything together in the two months that we've been planning. So I'll kick it off. I'm Missy Sorg. Uh, you guys saw me yesterday um, at Rebellious Flaw on Twitter. And I do a little bit of blogging, not frequently, so please don't try to find my blog. I don't think I've actually done anything with that in a while. I'm on Twitter periodically and Facebook primarily, and my big thing is baked goods. So if you look at my Twitter profile, you will see that I am a cupcake. So that's, that's kind of my thing, is I, I do food porn. Um, it's enough about me, because I'm really not that interesting. I, I more so love the, the people that I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over here to Amanda, since she's to my left. <laughs> and she's going to be the first one. <laughs> so this is Amanda Narcissi. Well, that was introducing myself, so on. <laughs> um, wow. I was told the other day I'm an early adopter of Twitter and Facebook from the beginning. And I've worked in vid video podcasting, regular podcasting, blogging regularly. Um, and recently we started Bold Pittsburgh, which is an internet um, e -zyme and blog. Um, and that's it. About it. You can find me at Aon Narcissi and at Bold Pittsburgh on Twitter. I guess that uh, leaves me here. Um, <laughs> oh, there's, there's, there's people too. We have yeah, to talk about them. You have to include that one. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we can talk about those guys later. I thought it was just going to be us three, and we just forget about the other people that did any work here. I think, I think they would like to also look like that, but no. Uh, we won't let that happen. Okay. Uh, my name's Will Reynolds Young. And I guess I would also be considered, I think we're all, we're all pretty uh, social up here. You can find me on Twitter at W. Reynolds Young, and there'll be a quiz later on how to spell it, but I'm not going to tell you either how to spell it. Um, I work online with my aunt's skincare company, and then I also work for a local grocer as well. Uh, and I really just enjoy teaching people about technology. So I'm going to and that over here to Mike. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg. I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter, and uh, I do Sorgatron Media, and uh, and uh, I'm doing the uh, video and streaming and everything, uh, trying to cover all four rooms, get everything captured. Uh, and I, I've been involved in some fashion since PodCamp One, doing a session back then. Uh, and because we had started podcasting way back in 2006 and with the Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, and uh, and I've, I've always been, you know, really uh, into the concept of Plot Campus, like I really embrace it. That's why I make sure there's cameras and streaming every, every year that I can since we've started doing this. Um, because I was really big on, you know, the idea of capturing everything. Uh, so uh, that's you know how we try to get everything out every year um, because it's not just people that make it or can't make it to this. Uh, there's a lot of people that do watch these videos online. It's a lot of really good information to get out there. So I don't really believe in kind of just you know getting that out there. So. Um, good morning. Hi. Good morning. I'm at Doug Hawk here. That is true, we did meet up on camp. First okay. Very first one. Uh, my name is Douglas Sturda. I drink beer for a living. It's a fantastic job. I love it. <laughs> Pays the bills, so I can't complain. Uh, I have a craft beer podcast called Should I Drink That? And most times you should. Uh, I've been around for seven, eight, eight and a half years now. Uh, 2006 is when we started. And uh, when we started with the show, uh, at the time, I had a co-host who has since retired. So we like the, the call. He basically just got tired of drinking somehow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I can't fathom that. But when we got started, uh, all we had was a laptop and a webcam, and that was it. That was our production. And our goal was we're going to do about three, four shows maybe. Well, the premise behind it was we're going to drink beer, talk about it, and. Just kind of BS. Uh, what we noticed is that when we were going out to bars, people would come up and ask us about craft beer. And we're like, there's got to be a better way to get the word out. And that's when podcasting was starting to come around. And I have a really strong tech background, uh, especially on the website with AV. 
So we're like, hey, let's let's create this podcast thing. Whatever. There's there's no rules on the internet, so we can pretty much say whatever we want, which is good. We do carry an explicit tag, by the way, if anyone gets our show. <laughs> and then uh, after that, it's the show had a little bit of steam, and then um, then we decided, all right, let's do one more show. We're gonna see if the, you know what the power of the internet is really gonna be like, and we made a video. And the video was going to be based on voting on our website, and it was who was going to chug a dogfish head 120 minute, which is 20% alcohol. And it ended up being me. But there was a stipulation behind it. So my character, I guess, or my name on the show is Father Spoon, the most reverend Father Spoon. Devout Catholic, decided to have some fun with it. So on Good Friday, after fasting, I took 20% beer dressed as a priest. <laughs> Thought we'd have some fun with it. Next thing I know, uh, we get picked up by Draft Magazine, and iTunes has a field day with it, and, uh, and we're getting calls from all over the country about why did you, first of all, why did you guys do this? It's considered sacrilege. And we were just having fun, and we had about 17 pages of hate on several forums. So thanks to doing something stupid on the internet, we became a hit with it, and uh, <laughs> which we, we didn't expect. And then it just it grew after that. And then people started contacting us about reviewing the beers, going to breweries, going to beer fest, and we realized that this thing had legs. And next thing we know, it's we're in the, the top 15 on iTunes in food and drink, and, and we're just stunned because we were two guys sitting around drinking beer and talking about it, and and now people are sending us stuff and. And uh, thankfully, it's, we were able to uh, make some money off it, and it's it's turned into a, a nice little career. And then that also turns into blogging and, and everything else. Are, are you done? Yes, I'm just <laughs> explaining the show because I I'm not teaching a session till later, so that's just the history of the show. You Thank you. Session on doing stupid things on the internet and turning it into a career. So if you'd like to follow my stupid antics on the internet, <laughs> at S I D T on the Twitters. <laughs> And we had a late cover to the stage, so we're going to pass the mic down to, to Katie Dudas. Gosh, I don't even think I know my real name anymore. Um, I'm actually Dutters, if any of you know me. Uh, I can honestly say I'm a late to this group. I, I actually moved to Pittsburgh way after these guys became friends, and I have made 98% of my friends, 98% of my friends without exaggeration are probably from the interwebs. <laughs> and it, it's an amazing, to me that became an amazing connection to me the way that I was able to create these relationships and what it was able to do and how much it changed my life, how many things have I would never have had the opportunity to do, how many jobs I've had the opportunity to do just because of connections I've made uh, through friendships and just interacting with people that I was brave enough to say hello to. And a lot of these guys I became friends with through PodCamp. This is the first time I, I've met a lot of these people and, and they're outstanding and I'm so thankful for these opportunities that I've had. And I think and, and even my field of study, I'm studying how the way social media is changing the way we connect and how it's, it, I think it's interesting that we're so different. You'll notice people are so different online versus in real life. And they're so much better when we finally get to meet them in real life. And I, I'm really thankful that I've had a chance to work with these people. And please feel free to pick any of their brains. They know a lot of things, except for Doug. I think everything's dead in there. <laughs> but I'm um, hey, Doug, if you're interested in following me, most platforms, um, Oh, wait, I'm on Instagram. I'm now on Yik Yak. <laughs> I like to introduce. Um, if you've never seen an awesome cast show, I, I have the opportunity to do that with Sword uh, weekly uh, when I can. And I'd like to introduce him to new and exciting um, applications. And this week was, or last week was Yik Yak. So that was a good time. What was it? There be hotties in the computer lab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you should learn where the hotties are through Yik Yak <laughs> or the parties. But that's a so you, you just heard it from everybody up here that we are all friends. Like we hang out outside of PodCamp sort of stuff. I mean, Katie, I, I text her just about daily. Um, Doug and Mike, they, they talk regularly. And we didn't know any of ourselves. We didn't know each other until we started with social media and, and PodCamp. Um, the only person up here that I actually knew was my husband, Mike, who was sitting two people down from me. And when he got involved with PodCamp, it was a, hey, this is kind of tech stuff. And my response was, oh, tech, that's totally your, your ball of wax. It's not mine. I have no interest in going. 
So I unfortunately missed out on PodCamps 1 and 2. And when he was talking about when they were planning PodCamp 3, that's when I started to get involved. And I have been involved in organizing and putting together the event, uh, with the exception of last year. So it's kind of interesting, the, the relationships that, that nurture and grow from who you meet during this weekend. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you folks. Do you have any questions for us? Um, if you have anything in particular about a certain technology or anything like that, we'll try to get the mic to whoever would be best fitted to answer. But join the conversation. Hey, if you don't want to talk to us, we'll, we'll keep talking forever and ever. <laughs> I promise you, we can do it. I, um, I can do a plug for my son's book. Okay. Landing more customers online. Uh, his name's David Grimm. It's available on Amazon.com. Uh, and he, he goes into using, you know, the, the <coughs> social media and things like that and all the, it's a fun book. He uses an analogy of fishing to uh, creating, you know, a viable market type thing. And it's cool. So it's landing more customers online. Yeah, through online marketing. Yeah. I think we just yeah. got someone to teach the marketing class. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> where Where is your son, by the way? He He, he lives in Orlando, Florida. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, he, he owns a marketing company, a business um, company down there, and um, he sold 500 copies of his book to the um, Orlando International Airport for them to. To uh, give to the re retail vendors, and this book is also used in, at the University of Central Florida in your business school. And that's one of the interesting things is social media. It, it, when PodCamp first started, and when social media first started, was not that mainstream. You didn't find people talking about it in regular conversation. I mean, Twitter has become everyday vernacular at this point. You know, everybody knows what Twitter is. And when you meet somebody, it's like, oh, you have a name, okay, do you have a Twitter? Do you have a Facebook? Um, so it, it's kind of interesting to have watched it evolve over the past few years. We didn't even have Twitter. We even had Twitter at the first podcast. Like, it was 2007, yeah. right? I mean, what were we talking about? Like, probably Facebook Pod and podcasting. podcasting okay. so hence the name. MySpace. MySpace was still. <laughs> Friendster. Friendster. I mean, that, like, like you know, the seeing how everything's kind of changed from there, it kind of, streamlined it feels because now it's like well we're, we're going to a social media session and we can talk about well twitter facebook we're good and then there's like it kind of fringes out from there and you, you know you're getting yaks uh so and, and even uh you know watching um you know i had the conversation the other day you know it feels like podcasting kind of dipped in and it, it, it didn't dip as far as people interested in it but it dipped kind of in the perception. So I mean, for for a while, we were talking about like, should we still call it podcast? Because it feels like it's an old term. Um, but now, with you know, I don't know, Wall Street Journal guys or NPR guys are having articles saying, "Hey, podcasting's alive again." It's like, well, uh, you just discovered it. We've been doing it the whole time. Me and Doug here are drinking our faces off on microphones, and uh, <laughs> and it's like, welcome to the party, guys. You know. Uh, but I love to see that reflected. That you know, there's a couple of years. I think I was the only podcasting session. I love to see that there's a bunch of other stuff. I know how much stuff I still learn from you, even because we just do stuff in different ways. And that's why I really dig like the, the situation. I have so many notes of things to check out. So I love that there's no longer a stigma that you say I met my friends on the internet. <laughs> so that was that was the thing that drove me nuts at first. Whenever you would say, "Oh, I met my friends online," you're like, "Oh, really? What kind of chat room were you in?" But now it, it's it's totally socially acceptable to make so many of your connections online and to be able to pick the brains of people quite easily. Um, and it's, it's funny for me having somebody in my life who has no social media, his Facebook page, and having him at PodCamp now and just watching him watch people go, oh my gosh, we've been friends for two years, I finally get to meet you. And he's like, what are you talking about? You, you're <laughs> known each other for two years. Like, well, no, it's different. Meeting in real life, meeting online, it's different. And, and, and to see his reaction towards things. And you guys are always on your phone. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how we roll here. It happened because if you think of the history just in terms of PodCamp and how it's changed, where we talked about PodCamp in the beginning didn't have Twitter 
and now it's kind of the focus of the conversation constantly here. I don't want to say podcasting has gone to the background, but we've certainly changed in, in every single way from where we started. And in this world that we're living, we're all learning from each other constantly, where when someone tells me that they're like an expert in something, I'm like, well, what are you an expert in? It's like an expert in being an expert or something, because there's always something to be learned as much as you know from someone else. And just even the different ways that people do things um, are really interesting to look at. Kind of partially to that, when I, when I first uh, heard of the uh, PodCamp concept uh, from uh, Justin Kanaki, who actually was, uh, I think at the time, a former coworker uh, at my job, uh, we did safety videos. We did safety videos together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, he told me about it. And I, and I just started podcasting, like at the beginning, like around the beginning of 2006. And I think the event was in, I think it was in November, uh, down at Filmmakers, because we're filmmakers. And, um, and, and I remember, like, kind of like the idea of, um, you know, well, I, I don't know, I'm thinking, of, I was like, I, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a presentation about what we're doing podcasting, but I haven't been done too long. I'm not really an expert. And he says, you know, you've been doing something that other people aren't doing. And that does make you more of an expert than somebody out there. And even if you're not, like, like my one friend, uh, Will, uh, yesterday did Podcasting 101, Audio Podcasting 101, and he just started a podcast. Uh, while he's been doing podcasts with me since the beginning, um, he's just now doing a podcast on his own where he's doing all the editing and he's doing all the content. And it's not just showing up and we have a conversation and I take care of the rest. Um, and even though you know he's only had that much experience, he has experience. He's gone through everything, and he has 14, 15 episodes of a podcast, and he has that experience on top of what he has from being on at least the content and, and social side of, of the other one for eight years. Um, so I think that's really important to think too. Like if you are an attendee and and like next year you're thinking about it, you're doing you know should I do a session? You know, what thing do you think you can impart, even if it is just a little thing? If you're not an expert in Twitter or Facebook, but you're a Google Plus expert for whatever reason, and you're one little niche, you know, I mean, that's 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 fine, you know? Um, and, and somebody's gonna learn from that, and somebody think that you're the person that kicks ass in that thing, you know? Um, so I think it's really important kind of um, on the kind of delivery side of things for what happens here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're my favorite person right now. I love your laugh. That's awesome. What I think is really cool with with the whole podcast thing and just social media in general is you never know when you're going to find something new that that could lead to something great. I think back to when uh, to how all this started for me is a friend of mine sent me um, Jenny, a pick girl. They sent me a, a link to her old blog, and while I'm going through it, I saw a link for the show that the Justin had, Something to be Desired, and I clicked that link. And he was, I think in season two or three, and, and I watched an episode, I'm like, oh my god, this is made in Pittsburgh. And I looked at the neighborhood, I'm like, oh my god, that's made down the street for me. I had no idea this was going on. And so I was living in Bellevue at the time, and they were doing some filming there. And from so from there, I started talking to Justin, and then I, I found out that he's from Erie, and I'm from Erie, and we have the same friends, but we'd never met before. So we, uh, we started talking about like uh, just video creation, and uh, and he mentions, hey, we're, I'm thinking of this thing called PodCamp. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's cool. He's like, yeah, you got a podcast. Come on down. We'll you know, we'll see what it's all about. And and the next thing I know, nine years later, I'm sitting here with these guys, and it it totally changed my life. Like you never know when that moment's going to happen. And that's the cool thing with social media and with with a lot of things now is one small link that you click on can change your life. You don't know when it's going to happen. And that's the cool thing about it, is it's the excitement of it. It can happen at any moment. And hopefully you click my link and start drinking good beer too. <laughs> Should I drink that back home? Um, I'm a PodCamp Pittsburgh transfer, as I like to call it. Um, I got into PodCamps in New Hampshire, of all places. Um, we were doing social media breakfasts up there, and the woman that was organizing those wrote to me and said, I want to do a podcast up here, even though we're so close to Boston, and Boston was the originators. Um, and we did three years in New Hampshire. 
and I went to Boston. I've been to Pittsburgh now a few times and volunteered, and this is my first year helping um, organize it. But it's funny, the relationships that span from up there to down here. Um, and that was, I think, the most shocking to me, is the fact that I could come down here and everybody's like, oh, wait a minute, so you know everybody from Boston, and, and they know people from down here. And so it wasn't just a friendship. It, we're not in a hub. We're basically spanning up and down the coast. And I think that was the most interesting. Um, However, on that side note, we are now the longest running out of the three, <laughs> um, which is pretty awesome um, that we lasted, whereas Boston was down a few years ago and New Hampshire only lasts about three years. So that makes us the longest running one out of those three, which is something to be said that um, Pittsburgh, while being a medium-sized city, um, has a lot of room to grow in its social media and its podcasting and blogging. And it, as long as there's people still willing to learn, it'll be into the future with it. And actually that comment right there is, is one of the big things that hit home for me this year. Uh, there was a question as to whether or not we were actually going to do the event this year. And it came down to it, and it was like, a couple of months ago, it was, it was go time. Either, either we pull the trigger and we do it, or we don't. And my concern was we've, we've gathered a pretty decent following. You know, we have people attending. We have people on Twitter reaching out saying, when is this year's event? Did I miss this year's event? We have people checking out the Facebook. We have people checking out the, the website. You know, so there's actively people interested in learning, which is why I got together this, this band of uh, bandits over here. And, and, and we, we decided we were going to do this. Um, we've put the event together, you know, pretty much the the majority of the people on this stage have helped in some capacity one way or another over the past few years. So it was kind of like riding a bicycle, you, you know, okay, I'm going to let you guys handle this, I'm going to let you guys handle this, you guys are really good at this, please do this type of thing. And we put it out there, got the ball rolling, um, tweets started coming in, people started commenting on the Facebook, started retweeting the tweets, and started filling out the, the stuff on the website. Um, we were getting questions for session submissions. All of those sessions, with exception to the 101 and the 201s, you people came up with. You know, it's, it's content that's interesting to you. And that's what keeps everything going here. Um, so we're glad to see that there's community involvement. And I love the fact that we're looking out and we're actually seeing people here. It's, it's not, oh, there's, there's one guy, okay. But even if it was just one guy, we would still do it because there's interest. And the more that we do it, the more it's going to sustain. Next year is 10. That's a huge deal. Like Katie just said. Or, I'm sorry, you're not Katie. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Like Amanda just said. Um, we're the longest running pod camp. It's, it's hard to imagine, but here it is. Any other comments? It's like a lot of I think you mentioned, like, I mean, you know, not all of us have done it every year. It's, it's trade off. Norm Hillsman really took the reins last year, so I want to give a lot of credit for him for keeping it going last year. And again, experimenting and like doing one day and see how that goes over. Um, we remember boot camp? Yes. Like it was like they did a pod camp and they did like a one day boot camp thing. I was like very, very one on one. Like that was a really cool concept. But, um, and they've, they've tried different things over the, over the years in different places and different concepts. Yeah. And community outreach, we were doing classes on the Carnegie Library for a while just to kind of get some on ones. I had a guy come in and we're trying to set people up their Facebook pages and he didn't know how to use a mouse yet. Like that was that was crazy. Like they're going to their computer classes at the library to learn how to use a computer, period. And we were getting some of them in. It was it was it was a, kind of a wild time to go do that. Uh, Missy and I and I think Norm might have done one too, if I recall. Um, but uh, but but you know that that's you know been a lot of hands, you know, Justin, you know, Justin, of course, for the first few years, and um, Jenny Roth was, was big in a uh, few years, and it, I'm forgetting a million other people I know, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it's been really cool, really cool that, you know, the community, somebody steps up, you know, every year, or a bunch of people step up. Well, I guess uh, we're wrapping up to, to about 22. And sessions are going to be opening here momentarily. So I guess we're going to go ahead and do some 
finishing remarks, and then let you guys go get ready for your, your sessions starting next. Um, myself, I, I again, I just I can't say thank you enough because to, to these people here on the stage sitting with me, I couldn't do it without you guys. Like I, I think that you guys are amazing. What you have to offer for the community is spectacular. And I, I know that Sorg has commented that it doesn't matter how little you think you know, the fact that you know more than somebody else is what's important. Um, I've taught the social media 101 and 201 sessions a couple of different years now. And it's amazing because I walk in there and people do. They, they ask me, you know, how do you do this? But at the same breath, I get to, a, somebody asks a question that I don't know, and somebody else from the session is, oh, I, I just did this. This is how you do this. So it's, it's a community involvement, even within the classroom setting. And that's one of the things that I like about it being the unconference. So I think that's pretty cool, and I'm looking forward to, to doing this again. Did you have a question there? Yeah, I thought okay. in case Justin is watching the screen, maybe he can call in and make a few comments. <laughs> well, I know that I asked Justin through Facebook um, when I posted that I was having some sessions and he said good luck and I pestered him to see that if he was coming and I don't believe that he is watching the sessions. He told me that he was up to some other, um, I would say no good, uh, but I mean I feel like that's what we're all up to here in general. We enjoy no good and that's what makes good I've seen I've in the end. I've seen him some Twitters and stuff, like, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. everything or retweet, so I mean he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's definitely he's always engaged in, in some sense. I know that even when I wasn't able to be here in some years, the way that I got started in PodCamp was I believe four or five, and it was one of the first years of video streaming, and there was the, the chat rooms, and I was interacting a ton in the chat rooms. And the next year, I made it a point to get involved with PodCamp. And what makes PodCamp is not just these people up on the stage here, as we've said like 37 times, but I'm gonna say it the 38th time. It's the, the people in the audience, the people who ask the questions, and that's how we learn what to do the next year because every year over and over again and then there's a bunch of other volunteers like there might be us guys up here on the stage but there's still people sitting at the registration desk checking people as they come in there's still people at who work for point park here too as well helping out to make sure that all the audio is good so there's like 37 billion other people behind the scenes as well that we have to thank for and, this and sitting in the audience i personally, and I'm probably verbalizing for other people here, thank you so very much for doing this. We really appreciate it. Um, well, thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> you guys are <laughs> Yeah. We will uh, wrap this all up here, and we'll let you guys mingle a little bit before we have our sessions here. Does anyone else have anything else to to say, Doug, you have any more drinking comments, any beers you need to shout out, need to happen later in the day, or anything like that? No? Free, free samples. Yeah. yeah. That, that was actually at the meet and greet. Yeah, the meet yeah, and yeah. greet. We, we had samples there. Yeah. So. We, we did, yeah. We have a, a lot of things that we have a meet and greet usually the night before and kind of just mingle the entire time, Friday night, as, as Missy said. Um, and it's always a good time as well because it's it's extremely casual, but it does come with alcohol and you know non-alcoholic drinks. Say like IKEA it's a bad thing. Food. Uh, well, Shame on us. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I shut it loose. <laughs> but I can tell Sorg is is itching to do some technical stuff, and we all. Uh, but hey, please, if you have any questions about the conference or you have anything, you know, look for someone in a blue shirt or someone up here, and I'll let. Don't be afraid to ask questions of us, each other. This is where you share your knowledge. And just because you think that you only know maybe this much, or you think you actually probably know way more than you realize, don't be afraid to ask, and don't be afraid to enter conversations, and don't be afraid to offer your expertise. This is how things happen. This is how brainstorming happens. Make sure you utilize this time to talk to each other and to talk to everybody involved. Speaking of making introductions, we did put out on the website um, on, I believe it was Friday, about the pointers for the pointers and tips for the weekend, and one of those tips was to bring ten business cards and to exchange ten business cards. Did anybody take us up on that? 
I love the fact that there are hands going up in the back of the room right now. Thank you guys. Um, it's, it's an easy icebreaker, um, just like the thing with lunch yesterday. Take somebody that, it's the same thing goes for today for lunch, you know. Take somebody that you just met. Go across to Market Square. Have lunch together. Have a conversation. Get to know each other. Um, Amanda did her session yesterday about the magazine that she did that started at PodCamp. You know, so you, you never know what's going to happen. And to be completely honest, even though you're sitting in the seat right now, you could be sitting up here sharing your own experiences next year. Maybe you could be presenting an awesome session next year for something that you have just done or created that was a result of conversations that you had yesterday, conversations that you had today. Um, jokingly, during the meet and greet, we were talking about a, um, a take on My Drunk Kitchen that we might do a spinoff with, with um, having to do with baking and stuff like that. Again, those, those, those conversations. I have heard two My Drunk, I have heard two My Drunk Kitchen spinoffs this yes. past weekend, and I think I helped somebody figure out how they're you doing one last night at dinner. Um, so that I can't wait to see how that goes. Um, I'm really excited about that one. I don't want to give away. It's such a great name. I don't want anybody to take it. Um, a quick reminder: there are live streaming webcams in every room. So if you're having a conversation, just be aware it is getting recorded and it will be on YouTube forever. Um, so I've heard, seen a couple of people on the phone and. And he said something to a couple of them during lunch yesterday, for instance. So just, just a little bit of awareness and that, that, that's happening. So, And if you're near a camera, I'm going to be capturing and editing all these, so I might find your conversation too. So uh, I've had some pretty interesting ones over the years. So. All right, on that one, I guess uh, we're, we're done yakking at you. Aw, Katie's, Katie's getting a little bit emotional over here. So we're going to go ahead and turn things over to the speaker for, for the next session in this room. and. Check out the schedule. There are updates that have been posted. Um, I was actually spending some time writing in the schedules out of the front desk. Um, so there were some sessions added for today, a couple of changes. So if, if you had your idea of what you wanted to check out, uh, maybe that's changed. So stop by again, look for anybody with a blue shirt for any questions about anything that you might have, and enjoy the rest of your day.